The new Marseille Children's Hospital, being constructed by the Lagos State Government, will outlive generations when completed. And the seven-story pediatric hospital cited on Adenija Adelaide Road, Lagos Island will be the biggest children's hospital in Africa's sub-Saharan region when completed. The new edifice, when completed, will replace the current 100-year-old Masi Hospital established in 1914 by the colonial masters. The old 85-bed facility is currently experiencing operational inadequacies, struggling to meet the care demands of children due to an increasing number of patients it refuses daily. The pressure on the hospital prompted the state government's move to upgrade the facility to meet the needs of the residents. The new Massey Hospital will operate on an independent power plant, IPP, and has a 10-floor multi-level car park. This is the Greater Lagos vision. Lagos is indeed rising and I'm your host, Love Oyedoku. Welcome. This is Lagos, the heartbeat of Nigeria. A city steeped in rich cultural heritage and now poised to become a global financial center. Well, a lot may us show, and it's an opportunity for us to just depict what Lagos is all about. And it's only at an event like this, competing with other biggest cities and other nations, that you can get to tell your story. So it's storytelling time for us. In a historic moment, Lagos made its inaugural appearance at the renowned Lord Mayor Show in London, a testament to its growing economic prominence. Lagos is a big mega city on its own right now. It's the largest city in Africa. It's the biggest economy that is a sub-national in Africa. But we want to make it one of the international financial centers in the world. All we're trying to do is to be able to let the world know that Lagos is indeed ready for bigger business. Lagos isn't just open for business. It's a gateway to the future, embracing innovation and welcoming investors from around the globe. We invite the world to witness Lagos' dynamism, progress, and the myriad of opportunities available for transformative, groundbreaking projects. Lagos is indeed ready to take over the world in the financial space, you know, in the economic space, and to truly, really be able to tell both the Lagos, the Nigerian, and the African story, and be able to let other parts of the world know who we are, understand our culture, understand that we are the center of culture, entertainment, music, in the whole of Africa, and to also be able to, for people to know um, what we have to give to the world. So the whole idea, right, is for us to be able to let the world, get them to know what is happening in Lagos. But GDP of Lagos is actually bigger than the GDP of Kenya, it's bigger than Ghana, it's bigger than Rwanda, and it's bigger than Senegal. As a little sub-national, it's very big in how it stands, in how it sits, and it's all of that conversation that we think a lot of people need to know what is happening in Lagos, you know, and how we can use the Lagos story, you know, to sort of like tell the African story. Episode, Lagos opens J.K. Randall Museum for public use. Lagos State Government commences campaign against hypertension and diabetes. Lagos Red Line, Sawolo's inaugural trip, kicks off commercial operations. Details of these and many more when we return. Please stay with us. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawulu has officially declared the museum in the J. Randall Center for Yoruba Heritage and Culture in Onikon open for public use. The museum, which exhibits historical, artistic, and cultural artifacts of the Yoruba, is a key component of the center 
which was commissioned last year. Governor Sawonde also appoints Kunduz Onikeku as the director of the center. The ceremony attracted a diverse crowd of art enthusiasts, dignitaries and stakeholders eager to witness the unveiling of the new cultural landmark. During the inauguration, Governor Sawolu emphasized the significance of the museum as a vital addition to Lagos' cultural landscape. Speaking at an interactive session with creative stakeholders, the governor stated that the state remains the centerpiece of tourism and has the potential for music, film, art and culture in Africa. So, Lagos was a very strong heritage place until when Nigeria also came and we had to begin to shift and move around. And some of our own grandfathers and great-grandfathers were all indigenous of this place. But they have to now begin to shift out into western the old western part of Lagos, you know, western region, which is like Suleri and the Kedja and the rest of But he said so many instructed that we growing up is even a taboo where you speak Yoruba. You cannot, they, you, they will punish you in school for speaking vernacular. Mokuro, they will punish you in school for, I mean, and that is where our problem started. So when I see them in Chokom now, somebody asking for reparation, our reparation is due long time before now. Because, you know, that is a culture and an history that we should not have even forgotten anything about. So you can imagine we growing up struggling to even be able to speak our local dialect. When in schools, you are not even meant to, to, to say anything like that. So as a people, if not the likes of yourselves and the kind of reincarnation we're trying to build now, we're actually losing. We're actually losing it. So that's why... You know, when we now talk about the history and the story of a place like this, you know, this whole area is a place where we can call maybe the three arm zones. During the colony of Lagos, down the road used to be the colonial, you know, um, um, residence, you know, of government, you know, which is where I humbly reside now, which is the governor's residence, the governor general, just down the road. All of them are pedestrian. Across is, you see the race course. Race course, those things, doing the culinary is where they, they, they do their polo and they do their racing. It was all about them. Next to you see our Savior's Church, that is the church they go to. You see long tennis court, that is the tennis court that they do. So the John Randall here was now beginning to be for the indigenous local. That was why you have Yoruba Tennis Court, which is the first indigenous Yoruba club. That's why you have it there. Do you understand? So you have Island Club to there, behind there. So this was not like a place left for recreation for indigenous, for indigenous people. Right? But the, 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 the name John Randall then also now built a swimming pool into this premises and had a small hall, which was now for the indigenous people. While embracing more participation from the private sector, Governor Sawolo said his administration will create an enabling environment for all stakeholders to thrive in the sector. What are we passing on? What are we <clears throat> leaving behind? That's why when we go upstairs now to see our attempt at having the Yoruba Museum, it's still an attempt because the place is still work in progress. We now need everybody to bring back that inheritance we need everybody that have access to that inheritance for us to bring it back and begin to build that heritage that we can now leave, you know, for you and even people behind. Because now becomes an historic place, an historic site that we talk about our heritage, our history, our culture. And, you know, like you said, yes, we just blanked out at some point as if nothing had happened. And we just move on into a new jet age and we're all... You know, so internet serving and as if that's all we know. <coughs> so the, 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 the premises we have upstairs is our own attempt at bringing back that inheritance and showcase that heritage. But like I said, it's not full yet. We're hoping we're using this, this medium to talk to the likes of the Beauty Museum that still has a lot of 
stolen our, artifact. Well, artifacts, you know, <laughs> you know, be it taken away, be it, you know, purchased, whatever in whatever name. Let us restore them back to the original people. Let us bring them back, Smithsonian, wherever they are. Let us be able to speak out and say to them, it's about time that we bring these things back. And even be able to now feature in, into modern architecture and modern history, the kind of you know, arts and, and culture that we have now, and be able to you know, bring the past, yes. the present, and what you see into the future, and bring it into one, one location. So, yes, the heritage thing, we don't have a whole lot now, but it's a work in progress that we all now need to work together to be able to, to get brilliant. To. In her remarks, Commissioner for Tourism, Arts and Culture, Toke Benson Awoyinka noted that the opening of the museum is an indication of the unwavering commitment of Lagos State to preserve and promote the invaluable history and traditions of the Yoruba people. Let us reflect on the significance of this gathering. The John Randall Center is more than just a building. It is a living tribute to the richness of Yoruba culture and an invitation for all to partake in its beauty. Together, let us honor our past, embrace our present, and inspire our future to elevate the legacy of Yoruba people. Benson Awinka said that the J. Rondo Center will serve as a beacon of knowledge, highlighting the profound contributions of the Yoruba ancestors and the enduring spirit of the rich culture as a center is assigned to foster a deep sense of connection and pride among all who visit. For it to be a yearly program, I believe that it is very sustainable and like Mr. Governor said, we will always support initiatives like this, not just from Cubans and the Afropolis team, but from other teams who are imagining things in Lagos, who are building stuff in Lagos, who are thinking out of the box to create festivals in Lagos. So it is very sustainable, it will be a yearly event for us, like we have our Greater Lagos, we're bringing back the Fancy Carnival, which we want to do on um, the 26th of December, and it will be a Unity Carnival where we're bringing all the Fancy Houses, so it's not just sporadic anymore. We have our boat together coming up on the 30th of November, popularly called Okwaje by the indigenous and citizens of Lagos, so we'll have a beautiful cultural display of boats and aquatic life on the Five Cowry Creek, we're looking forward to that. And then we dovetail into fashion as well. We want to bring in the fashion, the accessories and high-end fashion. A lot is made in Lagos. We're proudly Nigerian. A lot is made in Lagos. And we want to showcase it to the world through a program called the Lagos Luxury Line, which will showcase what we can do in art, in fashion, in everything that you can think of. Lagos is now becoming the center of excellence in Africa, not only in Nigeria. So we're really proud. And then we end up the, the, the year with our uh, festival, which is our Greater Lagos Fiesta. And we hope to be using the iconic place I'm looking ahead of me, which is the race course, the TDS. We want a convergence of our people, the convergence of our youth. So we're very going to be very busy from now, like the government said, October to December. So it's October to January 1st now, if I can see. The J. Rondo Museum features a diverse collection of contemporary and traditional artworks showcasing pieces from both established and emerging Nigerian artists. With its modern architecture and thoughtfully curated exhibitions, the museum aims to serve as a hub for artistic expression, education, and cultural dialogue. Lagos State Government has announced that about 8.67 million residents of the state are hypertensive, 1.73 million live with diabetes, while another 3.48 million residents live with obesity. Commissioner for Health, Professor Akin Abayomi, disclosed this at a press briefing to announce a statewide public health campaign on hypertension and diabetes. According to him, the state government hopes to test and screen 800,000 residents free within one week. Of this Project 10M, Lagos has been allocated a quota of identifying 800,000 Lagos citizens and residents between the same period to measure their blood pressure and their blood sugar. The objective 
is to increase awareness about hypertension or commonly known as blood pressure and diabetes or commonly known as blood sugar and also to encourage a positive health seeking behavior amongst our citizens in Lagos. What we are doing today <laughs> very, very important. For the 10 million, know your number, control your number. And I'm talking to members of the media who are here. I do not know the connection between hypertension and journalism. But how can you get into any newsroom and you test people who are there and about 90% of them will not be hypertension. Mm -hmm. If you measure hypertension in any newsroom, to them it's uh, something that is normal because many of them have seen it. Why? I do not know, but I suspect that in my own case it could be because of um, deadlines. Abayomi enjoined residents to do regular check-up because the symptoms of hypertension and diabetes show up when it is serious or late with dire consequences on the patients. If we're not paying attention to our very busy schedules and we're constantly under pressure, there is a risk that we may be making ourselves vulnerable to high blood pressure. Elevated blood pressure that is continuous will quietly and silently stress your blood vessels and organs and increase risk of heart disease and brain stroke. At exactly 5.20 p.m. on Tuesday, Lagos Red Line Rail departed at Platform 2 in Oyinbo Station for Agbadu, a suburb at Lagos Boundary Line. The inaugural ride kicked off the train's commercial operations seven months after the rail infrastructure was completed and commissioned. <laughs> Governor Babajide Sowunlu arrived at the station at 5 p.m. amid jubilation by members of the public invited to take the ride. Also joining the governor in the ride were members of the state cabinet, lawmakers, corporate executives, journalists and the public. The governor personally made the boarding announcement after which the train service commenced. After I get her, I gave it. After I gave it, it's in June. And finally, to take her all the way to Abadu, in the state. She will be on time, she will be on schedule, and it's an honor to lead the train journey here at the city. So, gentlemen, all of my passengers, mind the gap, mind the gap between the platform and the station. Make sure you have your blue county card. Make sure you have your blue county card. That is the only means to get the Red line train will be taken off now. Four minutes later, the train arrived at Yaba station with some passengers disembarking to connect the last mile to transport service to their destinations. The train stopped at Mushin before heading to Oshodi and Ikeja, where Sowonlu alongside his entourage disembarked. The journey took 34 minutes. We just came down from the train at Ikeja station and it took us exactly 34 minutes from Oingo. And we had to stop at Yaba, we stopped at Mushin, we stopped at Oshodi. We stopped at Ikeja, where we are right now. So, as you can see, it's been 
An outstanding experience is an experience that we believe will help solve public transportation issues in Lagos. It's an experience that we believe will reduce journey time for our citizens. It's an experience that we believe will ease connectivity. And you can see the train is moving again. It's going, it's still going to Agege. It's going to reduce before it gets to Agbado. But we opted to stop here. Addressing reporters at the Keja station, Sir Wonlu described his experience as smooth. The governor disclosed that the state was expecting additional rolling stocks for the red line next year. This, he said, will enhance the rapidity of the train service. I'm sure that all of you have seen that what we're about is about ensuring that we can fulfill all of our promises, especially on the red line haven't fulfilled similar promise on the blue line. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's really to pass on this message to all of our citizens that are on this corridor. There will be regular scheduled flight from Agbado all the way to Ibu and vice versa. And the scheduled timing you can see from the various train stations. So I want to thank you very much for joining us on this ride. Like I did mention, that we're still expecting additional more rolling stock, which will come in in the course of you know, our time in the new year. The red line is projected to transport up to 500,000 passengers daily, with fares set at 1,500 for the Oyimbu to Agbado route and 500 Naira for Iju to Agege. Daily operations will run from 6.17 a.m. to 9.17 PM. This is Lagos, the heartbeat of Nigeria, a city steeped in rich cultural heritage and now poised to become a global financial center. Well, a lot may us show, and it's an opportunity for us to just depict what Lagos is all about. And it's only at the event like this, competing with other bigger cities and other nations, that you can get to tell your story. So it's storytelling time for us. In a historic moment, Lagos made its inaugural appearance at the renowned Lord Mayor Show in London, a testament to its growing economic prominence. Lagos is a big mega city on its own right now. It's the largest city in Africa. It's the biggest economy that is a sub-national in Africa. But we want to make it one of the international financial centers in the world. All we're trying to do is to be able to let the world know that Lagos is indeed ready for bigger business. Lagos isn't just open for business. It's a gateway to the future, embracing innovation and welcoming investors from around the globe. We invite the world to witness Lagos's dynamism, progress, and the myriad of opportunities available for transformative, groundbreaking projects. Lagos is indeed ready to take over the world in the financial space, you know, in the economic space, and to truly, really be able to tell both the Lagos, the Nigerian, and the African story, and be able to let other parts of the world know who we are, understand our culture, understand that we are the center of culture, entertainment, music in the whole of Africa, and to also be able to, for people to know um, what we have to give to the world. So the whole idea, right, is for us to be able to let the world, get them to know what is happening in Lagos. But GDP of Lagos is actually bigger than the GDP of Kenya, it's bigger than Ghana, it's bigger than Rwanda, and it's bigger than Senegal. As a little sub-national, it's very big in how it stands, in how it sits, and it's all of that conversation that we think a lot of people need to know what is happening in Lagos, you know, and how we can use the Lagos story, you know, to sort of like tell the African story. That's all we have for you on this episode of the Greater Lagos Vision on Plus TV Africa. I am Love Uyiduku. Bye now.